Hey everyone, my name is Carissa and this is Crystal and we are founders of Black Dog School of Yoga, which is a virtual online platform and we also have live classes throughout the week. You can find more information by clicking on the um, button below by clicking on our website. So today we're just going to talk about the different floors of the house. So we have an analogy that the body is like a house. So we have our first floor, which is our legs up to our hips. We have our second floor, which is our torso up to um, our mouth. And then from above the mouth all the way up is the third floor. The first floor is all about being. It's all about stamina. If you think about the basement in your house, it's your foundation. It houses all of your electrical and your plumbing. The second floor is all about doing. It's where you go out, you shake a hand, you make a deal. This is where we spend a lot of our time, most of us on this second floor, going out and doing things. And then lastly, we have the third floor, which is the imagination. It's where we store all of our valuables, our inspiration, creativity, intuition. So we just have a three series class that we're going to release um, over the next three weeks. And each of them is going to go through each floor a little bit more. So today we're going to focus on our first floor, our basement, our foundation. This is our um, mascot, one of them, Lewis. You might see a couple dogs come in and out and they are the inspiration behind Black Dog School of Yoga. So you're, if you guys have a block or a couple blocks, that's great. If you don't, totally fine. You can use a really thick book or a couple books. Um, you can use towels as blankets. You can even use, instead of using blocks, you can use mason jars to kind of prop your hands up. But the idea is to just get really creative with what you have in your house. So we're just going to find a comfortable seat. And if you have a block, you're just going to take it back behind you on the lowest setting. You're going to bring your ankles around the block and then have a seat. So we're going to start by talking about um, plugging down through the perineum so that we have a neutral spine. And the reason why we cue from the perineum is because each person's body is different. So if I cue everyone to bring the pubis forward, it might be too much for some people. If I say tuck the tailbone, it might be too much for some people. So we want to find a neutral space that is um, healthy and of benefit to everyone. So I'm going to have you close your eyes so we can find that uh, the perineum. And then once you close your eyes, just begin to deepen your breath, breathing in and out of your nose and filling your belly full. If you know that oceanic throat breathing or ujjayi pranayama, you can find that, pulling the air in across the back of the throat and out. And then as you breathe, I just want you to rock gently forward and back. So you roll more onto the pubic bone and then you roll more back onto the tailbone. And the way that we find center is by finding what's not center, by finding the opposites, by finding the extremes. And this is also known as mediating the polarities. So when you go to wash your dishes, if you turn the water on and it's too hot, then you add a little bit more cold. Conversely, if you get in the shower and you have too much cold, then you add a little bit more hot. So we're always mediating the polarities, which just means the opposite ends of things, hot, cold, up, down, forward, back, right, left. And this is also that we can be in the center. So start to make the rocks a little bit smaller so that you anchor more into the center. And you find the perineum, and the perineum is just between the sex organs and the anus. And then once you find that, your pubis will be a little bit more down and your tailbone will be a little bit more up. So you might have a bigger curvature to the low back. And then you're going to pull back through your right sits bone so it plugs, and then pull back through your left sits bone so it plugs. So now you have a triangle that mediates the middle, which is your perineum, right sits bone, and left sits bone. This will give you relief in your low back and then the ability to rise up. So when we build a house, we first create a good foundation so that 
on the foundation we can build a living room kitchen bedrooms and then finally all the way up to the attic or bedrooms on the top floor but we have to have a good foundation in order to rise up so once you found your triangle then pull the top lobes of the lungs up towards the ceiling so it's not a huge puff of the chest out it's rather a pull of the lungs up and forward your shoulder blades will naturally descend. You don't need to squeeze to engage them. And then your vision will move up towards where the wall meets the ceiling as if your eyes were open so that your vision is forward into the future, into your potential, rather than down at the floor. And this is a theme that we'll be returning to in class over and over again. So take one more breath here and then let it out. And then we'll find this um, in our seated, we'll find our cat cow. So take your hands to your knees here at first. And this might be a little bit different than what you're used to, but just stay with me here. So on the inhale, you're going to pull forward like you're moving your chest forward into uh, cow pose. And then exhale, you're going to tuck your chin to your chest as you round your spine into cat. Inhale, come forward, really nice grip of the hands on the knees. And then exhale, round your spine back. And we're just going to do that slow a few more times and really let your vision move with you so you make the arc of potential. So as we go into our back, that represents the past. As we come into our chest and move forward, that represents the future. And then, like I said, we're always mediating between the front and the back, between our past and our future. We don't want to stay in our past. We just want to go back there to uh, reflect so that we can get information to take forward into our future. Good. And then when you become a little bit more proficient at this and you speed it up and you make the breath a little bit more feathery light. So it's inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, sharp through the nose. And you can take this as fast or as slow as you want. As you can see, Crystal speeding it up a little bit faster. And that's totally okay. When you take things a little bit faster, then you build a little bit more heat in your body. And remember, we're working on the first floor. If you think about the basement again, where your plumbing, where your electrical is, where your furnace is, you don't heat things in your house from the top down, you heat things from the bottom up. So we begin to create a little bit more heat in our bodies good keep going in out in out <laughs> and as you take this a little bit faster you find more stillness in the chest so that you just rock forward through the pelvis so make this a hip action forward back forward back good and then again when it feels a little bit more comfortable you speed it up it's just like reading or riding a bike when you first start to learn how to read you read slow and haltingly as you read the words and then also as you start to get a bit better at it, you start to read faster. And then you can see crystals mediating between the two fast and slow. When you start to go fast, you really heat yourself up. And then when you slow down, you begin to cool yourself down. So it becomes a practice of good technique and knowing when you need to heat yourself up and knowing also when you need to cool yourself down. Keep going. <laughs> This is really good to release any tension in the low back, to energize the kidneys, which are like the battery packs. They live right on your low back. We're here for let's go 20 more. Let's go a little bit faster and just bust them out. You might begin to feel the heat rising. Good. <laughs> 10. Good, pause in the center. Hook your right thumb over your left, take your arms up overhead, and take a deep breath in, holding at the top. Take three sips of air, hold, hold full, let the prana, like a little pressure cooker, rise up in you all the way up through the center channel, all the way up through the crown of your head, and as you exhale, let the air out, and bring your hands down. Coming back to center once again, last time, then we'll get it moving. Find your perineum, right sits bone, left sits bones. From that place of stability, rise up into the second floor, pulling the lungs up and forward. And then finally to the third floor, lifting your vision out toward your future so that you can fulfill your potential. And then go ahead and open your eyes. Come forward off the block. And let's move into a downward facing dog. Excuse me, Lewis. 
He's like, I am the downward facing dog. So come to downward facing dog and just um, move into how you normally move into your downward facing dog. Maybe you pedal out your feet. Maybe you bend one knee, then the other. Maybe you wag your hips from side to side. Good, and then let's come into a formal measure. So there's a way to measure everything. And when we have a good measure, we have a good foundation. So come forward into high plank. And then just for a moment, drop your knees so we can measure shoulder distance. So pivot on the heels of your hands until the middle fingers touch and make sure that it's not the nail, that it's actually the fleshy part of the finger. And that is shoulder distance. And then pivot back on the heels of the hands to widen out the hands and make sure the middle fingers are parallel to one another and to the edge of your mat. So you might have to change the orientation of your hands just a bit. And then one last thing before we come up, make sure that the fingers are spread but not so wide that the fingers are overspread. It will take pressure into the joints. You don't want to have like jazz hands. You want to quiet the fingers a little bit. We like to say, don't be so dramatic. Quiet your fingers down. Then from here, once you have all of that great foundation, take your feet back into high plank. Roll to your tiptoes as if you are pressing your foot against a wall or someone had a block behind the soles of your feet. And there's a 90 de degree angle, so the sole of the foot shines towards the back of the room. Then go up to your hands and find the center of the palm. So we take, often take pressure into the outside, into the inside, into the fingertips, but find directly in the center of the palm. And then imagine pulling that up through the center of the elbow, the center of the arm bones, and finally to the shoulder tips. And then without changing anything about this, about the length, just bend your knees, stick your butt up and back. Good. Now we want to have a generous bend in the knees here so that we can find some freedom in the tailbone. So just for a second, I want you guys to straighten out your legs and try to get your heels down. And you can feel how the lower back rounds and the pelvis is really locked. So if you try to melt your heart back, there's not as much freedom. Now bend your knees, lift your heels, and then see the space now created in the pelvis. Roll the tailbone up towards the sky, and then see how there's freedom to melt the heart a little bit further back towards the thighs. Good. And then we can go into even more measure through the feet. So we can figure out hips width distance by pivoting on the ball of the right or left foot and turning the heel in, yeah, so that it measures towards the other foot, and then pivot back, and we know that we're hips width distance. And then look to see if there's a bunch of wrinkles on the front of the ankles. If there are, lift the heels until the wrinkles just barely disappear. That's how you know that you're at the right um, height on the heels. And then once again, bend your knees, throw them forward towards the mat, and lift the tailbone up. Press through your hands to stretch away from the ground. And then inhale, take it back forward through high plank. Good. And then we're just going to fold and unfold a couple times. So taking it back, downward facing dog, inhale forward, exhale back, and then come into a nice rhythm. And each time you come back, really load the knees like you're loading a spring. So as you can see, Crystal's loading the knees, loading the legs so that she can come forward and back. The other thing you'll notice is she's looking forward the entire time. So nothing interesting is happening at the belly button or the groins. What's interesting is in front of you. That's where your future is. That's where your potential is. And she's just folding and unfolding from the hips. That's simply it. Nothing else is really changing in her body. She's folding from this major joint. Of course, the angle of the shoulders will change, but she's just folding and unfolding from this major joint. And you're just going to take this a few more times, getting really into the first floor, into your legs, loading the joints, creating space, creating heat. Final three, two, and one. Good. Come back to downward facing dog. Settle in. From here, walk your feet forward, walk your hands back till you're in the middle of the mat. And then round your spine, come all the way up to stand. Go nice and slow. Once you're at standing, take your arms overhead, interlace your hands, release your index finger, and then reach up. So again here, I want you to find the perineum, the orientation of the perineum. Because again, if we give you the cue of lift your tailbone, tuck your tailbone, lift your pubis, 
it can be um, injurious for some people while beneficial from the other. But let's think about where the perineum is. So again, the space between the sex organs and the anus. And I wanted to point directly down as if you're still sitting on the block. And then once you do that, pull back through your right sits bone and your left sits bone. So the exact same thing that we did while sitting on the block, we're just in a little bit of a different orientation. And that should put you in your own personal neutral spine where the tailbone slightly lifted, a little bit of curvature in the low back, and then really squeeze through the palms and reach up through the index finger. Take an inhale breath, and then exhale, tick-tock over to the right side. Let your hips swing way far to the left as you pull with the bottom hand with your right hand out to the diagonal. So find the cross-reference of your left, left hip to the fingertips pointing out towards the right side. Then you're gonna scoop the right shoulder under so both of your armpits are shining forward towards the front of the room. And even though we're moving over to the right side, find length on the right side so you're not squishing your right kidney. Good, one more breath. And then inhale, come up through center, and then exhale over to the left. Send the hips all the way over to the right. Stamp more weight into the right foot as you pull with your left hand to take your fingertips on the diagonal. So find the cross reference of your right hip going up through your fingertips over on the left side. And then find equal measure on both side bodies. Roll the left shoulder under so both of your armpits roll forward that you're not kind of hunching and rounding over. Good. Take an inhale, come up through center. And then exhale, your f you'll forward fold all the way down. Bend the knees generously. Let the head hang. Hang here for a moment. So again, we want that generous bend in the knees. You never want to lock at the joints because lymph is moving, currency is moving, blood is moving. And we don't want to lock anything out. We want to have the joints be spacious and capacious. So generous bend in the knees until your ribs land onto your thighs. Inhale, halfway lift, take your fingertips to the floor, look forward. And then exhale, find a plank pose. Plant your hands, step it back. Use the plank as a transition to measure. So look down at your hands, make sure that your fingers are a little bit more quiet, that you're not splaying through the joints, especially of the pinky. Press to the center of the hand, make sure that your shoulders are stacked over your wrists, and then bend your knees, take it back, downward facing dog. Gentle bend in the knees, lift the hips up, press through the center of the palm, and notice especially if you're taking weight into the index and thumb. If you're not, roll more weight there. Inhale as you look forward toward your thumbs, and then exhale, step your right foot forward to where your right hand is, and then your left foot to meet it, forward fold. Measure two fists in between your feet, that's hip width distance. Inhale, give me a halfway lift, pull your heart forward with your knees still bent, please, and then exhale, fold. Inhale, rise all the way up. Interlace your hands, reach up. Go over to the right side, tick tock, take your hips to the left. Inhale, come back up through center, and then exhale, tick tock over to the left. Inhale, come up through center. This time, grab opposite elbows, throw your elbows up into your palms. So this is a magical fit in the body. There's many, which we'll talk about. But um, the palm of your hand fits perfectly over the elbow. So th find the fit and then throw the elbows up into your palms like you're throwing a baseball into a baseball mitt. Let your hips come forward over your heels and then start to go back, but not by way of a back bend, but rather by going forward. That's how you find the back bend, not by going back, but by going forward into your future. Take an inhale breath and then exhale, release, find your forward fold. Bend the knees as you come down, inhale, halfway lift, look forward. Exhale, plant the hands, step it back, high plank. Again, let high plank be a transition pose for measuring, and then exhale, coming back to downward facing dog. Let's find that one last time through. Inhale, look forward. This time, step your left foot forward to your thumb, and then your right, fold. Measure two fists in between. Inhale, halfway lift, and exhale, fold. 
Inhale, take your arms all the way up overhead. Find the opposite interlace of the hands, the one that feels more awkward. Tick tock over to the right. Inhale through center. Tick tock over to the left. Inhale through center. And then find the opposite forearm on top, the one that feels more awkward. Ball and mitt fit, elbows into palms. Let your hips come forward over your heels. So you create an arch like a bow and arrow, like the bow part of an air bow and arrow, so that you find an arc across the front line of the body. And then keep that as you sink your hips back down into chair pose. So start to bend the knees. Good. And then eventually your torso comes parallel with the ground. You're still throwing your elbows up into your palms. Find weight in the center of the foot. Lift the tailbone, reach your heart down, take one more breath, and then exhale, forward fold. Release your hands, inhale, halfway lift, look forward. And then exhale, fold, plant your hands, step it back, high plank. From here, instead of coming back to downward facing dog, we're gonna come all the way down into our bellies, lowering down nice and slow. Wonderful. Then take your fingertips out to the side. Press yourself up so that you're um, on your knees. Good. And this is called um, a little bit of a lung flow. So we want the lungs to be on the front side of the body so we can get access. So you're just going to bend the elbows and round up and around. And think as if you're leading with your lungs. So your lungs come down first. You have to have really good engagement in the legs so you don't, don't dump into the low back and then take it the opposite direction. So this is also pretty demanding on the arms. Stay with it. Good, and then come back down through center. Leave the butt up, start to come all the way down till your chest touches. Good, plant your hands down beside you. Inhale up cobra, tops of the feet come down and then exhale lower. Inhale, press back up to your knees. Take your knees wide, big toes to touch. Take your fingertips far in front of you and then sit your hips back toward your heels. Try not to let your forehead touch down. Try and keep your head in the frame of your arms so that you have a good frame from not only hip, hip, shoulder, shoulder, but also shoulder, shoulder, wrist, wrist. You're going to keep your armpits lifted, arms lifted, and instead melt from your heart rather than from your head and your neck. And then inhale, come forward. Exhale, find your downward facing dog. Step your right foot to the middle of your mat, enough so that your right foot comes fully down towards the floor. And then you can come up on your fingertips. If you have a couple blocks, that's really nice. Or you can use some mason jars, whatever you have handy to elevate. But fingertips is um, also fine here. Crystal's gonna show you the variation with the blocks just in case you have those. And then you're just going to lift your left leg. And you're gonna lift your left leg directly in line with your hip. So this is not a hip opening, kick the leg up. You're gonna keep the hip closed, dropping your outer left hip down. Stay nice and high up on fingertips. And we're um, flushing the right leg here. So again, this class is all about the first floor, about the foundation. So we're flushing the right groin, we're flushing the right thigh bone. Then if you want to, you can go ahead and drop your head. And then if there's space, you can lift the left leg, but let the lift of the left leg come from the inner thigh rather than throwing the hip open and cranking the leg up. Yeah, if you want, you can walk your fingertips out even more. <coughs> there should be a gentle bend in the right knee so your right rib lands on your right thigh. So it's almost like a modified downward facing dog. And then you're gonna find the center of your right foot by cross-referencing. So look at your right big toe and then find the outer right heel. Imagine drawing a diagonal between those two. And then find the pinky toe side and the inner heel. Imagine drawing a diagonal. 
and then where X marks the spot, press down to lift up through the right sits bone, opening up the back of the right knee. One more breath, and then exhale, release, step it back, downward facing dog. Hmm. And then let's do the left side. So step the left foot into the center of the mat or wherever you can get the foot fully down. Coming up, up onto fingertips, coming up onto blocks, and then lift your right leg so that it comes directly straight out from the hips. Let the hips be closed down towards the ground. What I mean by that, like on the other side, try not to open your hip up to the side wall, but rather drop the outer right hip down. We're flushing the left um, side this time, the left groin, the left thigh bone. And then maybe you walk your fingertips far out, you drop your head just slightly. And then from this place, maybe you find a little bit of a lift through the right leg. So lift from the inner right thigh though, instead of opening up the hip and lifting the leg way high, let it be subtle. And then find X marks the spot on the left foot. So look at the right, uh, excuse me, the left big toe and find the outer heel, draw a diagonal. Then the pinky toe and the inner heel, find a diagonal. Then where X marks the spot, press down to lift up and maybe the left leg comes a little bit straighter. But the entire time, my left ribs are resting on my left thigh. Good. Take one more full breath in and out. Really step back, downward facing dog. On an inhale, come forward, high plank. Drop your hips, but keep your toes tucked. Come to a tuck toed upward facing dog. So the legs are really active in this version. And then exhale, come back, downward facing dog. Inhale, look forward to your right thumb. Step your right foot forward and then drop the back knee down. Untuck the back toes so the top of the back foot is down and that you're pressing into the center. And then I want you to press into the center so much that you actually lift the kneecap. Now that's how much engagement I want on that top, top foot even when you bring the back knee down. And then let's find a, a good measure. So again, many ways to measure good fit in the body. Take your right knee to your right armpit and your right hand should land just on the outside of that. The right knee above the right ankle. And that's how you know that you're at 90 degrees. Your right ribs, again, should be resting right on your right thigh here. And then we're just gonna take into a hamstring stretch, but we're gonna stretch from a place of strength. We're gonna do some fascial stretching. So walk it back, again, hands on blocks, really nice here, and you're gonna flex your right toes. Then you're gonna energetically drag the heel of the right foot back towards your left knee. So you're not actually, I'm gonna do the motion here, you're doing like this kind of um, action, but your heel's not actually gonna move. But you'll find that once you drag the heel back, the hamstring begins to fire. Keep that, inhale, come forward, keep the toes lifted, and then resist, resist, resist back. So you're gonna come a little bit faster forward, and then you're gonna resist all the way back, good. And then we're just gonna keep doing this a few times. So whenever we stretch muscle, we also want to have strength. If we don't, we're going to overstretch the muscle. And you'll find that actually over time, if you do this uh, stretching with engagement or with strength, that you'll actually begin to lengthen the hamstring, but from a place of suppleness in the muscle rather than a forcing and a stretching. That's how we tear things. Good, keep it going. The other thing you'll notice here is that for both of us, our knee stays relatively bent. Crystal has much more open hamstrings than I do, so her knee comes a little bit straighter, but not all the way straight. So your knee might be straighter, it might not. But when we take the knee straight, then what happens is my spine rounds, my kidneys, which live on my low back, are kind of squished. So I want to keep the knee bent, and I want to keep my right ribs attached to my thigh the entire time I'm doing this. And again, we're resisting back. Keep going. Let's do five. Three, 
two, and one. Good, stay forward in your lunge. Tuck the back toes and lift the back knee, but still find your good measure in your lunge. So knee to armpit, hands on either side. And then you're gonna take your arms wide to 10 o'clock and two o'clock, coming up onto fingertips or again blocks like Crystal has. And then really work to pull your right hip back and your left hip forward. So you always want your hips on this clock face. Imagine that your pubis is at 12 o'clock, your right hip is at three, your tailbone is at six, and your left hip is at nine. So keep your hips on that clock face. And then you're gonna make your fingertips a little bit lighter and take your arms forward. Make a fist and then come all the way up. Good. Really spike the back heel so you put some air in your tires. You pump things up. Press up and reach up through the fists. Stay at that 90 degree in the knee, in the front knee, throwing the front knee forward. But then remember, your hips need to be on that clock face. So pull your right hip back to 12 o'clock, or uh, three o'clock rather. So right hip to its own side. And then left hip out to nine. Left hip to its own side. And then think about finding a back bend, but by way of going forward. So throw the belly button forward, sternum bowed forward, and start to make that really nice arc across the front line of the body as you reach up, maybe look up. One more breath. And then exhale, release. Plant your hands to the earth, step it back, downward facing dog. Inhale, come forward, tuck toed upward facing dog. Lift your heart, legs nice and active and then exhale back, downward facing dog. Let's do that two more times, inhale, come forward. Exhale back. One more, inhale forward. And exhale back. Look forward to your left thumb, step your left foot, and then come down to your back knee. Untuck the toe so the top of the foot is down, and then press so much so that you lift the knee Keep that same engagement as you slowly lower the knee down. So this will really save any kind of pain on the kneecap there. Then find your good fit. Knee to armpit, left hand down by your side. Wonderful. Then from here, let's take our hamstring stretch. So come on back, flex the toes. With the toes flex, drag the left heel back toward your right hip. This will also help to square the hips and then keep that energetic engagement so the hamstring is fired, and then come forward and resist back. So you're gonna come a little bit faster forward, but then you're gonna really slow it down as you pull it back. Good. And again, that left knee is gonna stay nice and bent. Some less bent than others, depending on um, hamstring flexibility, how it already is. But the idea is that we find that strength within the structure of flexibility. In the beginning, I talked about how we're always mediating those polarities of up, down, right, left, hot, cold. We're always trying to find the center. So if we just spend all of our time over stretching, then we're not gonna have as much strength, too much flexibility, not enough boundaries. But if all we're focused on is strength, 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 then we have no flexibility or malleability, and that's how we end up tearing or ripping things. So again, we're always meeting that, mediating that polarity, and this time between strength and flexibility. We keep the muscle toned as we stretch it out. So the muscle lengthens, but with strength, with malleability, not with force. Good, let's do about five more here. Three, two, and one. Good, come forward, tuck the back toes, and lift the knee, finding your lunge. So it's always easier to find more of the foundation when we're further down towards the floor. So you set up the pose before you rise up into your second floor. Remember, this is all about the first floor. So armpit to knee, so you find that 90 degree. Spike the back heel so it's nice and lifted. You put air in your tires and then find the orientation of the hips. So pull the left hip back to nine o'clock as you bring the right hip forward and around to three o'clock. 
And then once you have that great foundation, then start to take less weight into the fingertips and draw the arms forward, make fists. Change nothing about the lower half of the body, just lift up through the upper part. And then once you're up, you mediate again. You find where things have shifted since you've lifted. So have you come out of the bend in the front knee, throw the left knee forward, as if you're throwing a baseball forward into a baseball, uh, into a baseball mitt. And then lift the back heel. Did the heel start to drop? Put some air in your tires so you have some buoyancy through your pelvis. And then pull your hips back so your left hip comes back to its own side and your right hip comes back forward to its own side. And then from that, you find the back, back bend. You potentiate into your future. So you throw the belly button forward, lungs forward, reach and punch the arms up towards the ceiling. One more breath. And then exhale, release. Bring your hands to the earth, step it back, downward facing dog. And then three times through our tuck-toed, upward facing dog, and then back. Good, one last time. And downward facing dog. All right, so bring your feet forward, your hands back. We're gonna go into a little bit of hang practice, then we'll take it down towards the ground and cool it off. So, Hang practice, first floor, legs, all about stamina. Take two fists, measure it in between your feet. That's hip width distance. A really nice thing to do here is to take a blanket or a towel, whatever you have, and put it underneath your heels so that you get a little bit more lift through the heels. And then take your head, hang it down low. Now, if you notice here, both of our knees are bent. Again, Crystal has a bit more hamstring flexibility than I do, so my knees here are pretty generously bent. But what we want is we want the ribs to land on the thighs. And you guys have heard me talk about this a lot. And the reason for this being is because our kidneys live right here on our lower backs. And our kidneys are like the um, toilets of the house, if you think about this analogy of the house as a body. They flush out all the toxins. They're also like our battery packs. So we need to restore the, ener uh, the energy of the kidneys in order to energize the body. When the ribs are lay uh, laying on the thighs, then I note that the kidneys are well organized, that they're not puffed and rounded, that they have space to re-energize. Interlace your hands around your head and then take your elbows to your shin bones. So your elbows should meet directly into the center and you find a bit of compactness of coming into yourself. So the first floor, the basement, stability, foundation. It's all about being, whereas the second floor is doing, the third floor is imagination, creation. And if you think about your basement, if you have one, it's like where you store all the stuff that you like want to think about later or need to organize later, or it might be a little bit dank or dark. It's a place that we don't really want to spend time in, but is necessary and beneficial to in order to give rise to our living quarters. We eventually need to go through the box of stuff that we've stored to look at later. We eventually need to go through that in order to have a solid foundation. It's almost that um, internal spiritual practice or like going to therapy or whatever your tool or technique is to examine yourself, to go into your basement, into your depths. Again, release the fingertips down. <clears throat> and then I just want you to find a gentle rock forward and back. And I know at this point the legs might be burning if you're not used to this. Crystal and I have both been in classes with teachers who like 30 minutes in were still in a hang. <laughs> um, so it definitely requires some build up. But try and stay with it because that's the point of the foundation is that we want to like run out of our basement. We want to run out of being or sitting still. But the more we practice it, the better we get at it. <laughs> And then make the rock smaller and smaller until you find center. What you'll notice is if you're too far into your toes, the calves work too hard. If you're too far into your heels, the quads work too hard. 
So you'll need to find that center, finding that cross-reference of the big toes to the outer heel, pinky toe to the inner heel. And then find a halfway lift, the knees still bent here, we're still in our hang, bring your fingertips forward. This is a great time to take your hands onto blocks. That would be my preference if you had blocks, I'm gonna demonstrate without, but if you have blocks or again, mason jars or anything, books, anything that can give you a little bit of height here. Find the center of the foot, press down to lift the tailbone up. The tailbone should still be the highest point in your body and then really melt your heart down. And then let's weave the imagination. Let's weave the, uh, the neurology into the body. So inhale, think about moving up the backs of the legs all the way up to the tailbone. And then exhale around the curvatures of the spine, the neck, all the way down to the fingertips. Inhale, travels you back up the back of the legs. And exhale all the way down, back to the crown of the head, to the fingertips. This practice also becomes a tool for when our nervous system begins to alert, our legs are on fire or shaking. Then we have practices to cool ourselves down, calm ourselves down. And in this, it's the breath. So when you want to run, how can you stay? And when you stay too long, then also how can you get up and leave? How do you know when it's time? And then take it over to the right side. So take your um, fingertips over to about two o'clock, but leave your hand shoulder distance so don't like narrow them. And then you're gonna pull your left hip back. So again, it comes to its own side. It comes to that nine o'clock. And then your right hip comes forward. And you breathe into your left lung, left ribs. And then walk the left fingertips out a little bit further to get more stretch. And And then come back through center, take it all the way over to the left side, over to 10 o'clock. Pull your right hip back to its own side to three and your left hip forward to nine and then crawl your right fingertips out a little bit further forward. Breathe into your right lung, your right ribs. and then come all the way back through center. Last little bit here, I promise you guys, come back into your hang, come back into your fold. It's always that last second before we wanna run out that we ask ourselves, can we stay for a little bit longer? Can we find the center of the foot and lift up, lifting the tailbone up, maybe drop the head down, really let the torso drape onto the leg so the torso doesn't have to work here. And then commit to four more breaths. Inhaling up the backs of the legs, exhaling down the spine. Three more. Two. Last one. Good, from here slowly start to rise up. And I mean slow. <laughs> I know the tendency is to again jolt and run out of the basement. But see if you can take your time. Oh, sweet relief. Pause here for a moment. Feeling the energy in your body. Notice how, to, how it settles. Maybe you feel a movement of the energy that was in the head from forward folding so long, moving down to the center. Maybe you feel the relief of the legs rising up from the base.
Give it a few more breaths for everything to come back to center. We've expended a lot of energy. We've heated the body up. Now we catch the grace of our effort. We reap what we sow. We receive the benefits of our practice. And go ahead and open your eyes and then come all the way down onto your seat. All right. So keep your um, left leg long and then draw your right knee in and then just hop it over your leg. So we'll come into a twist. Have your spine nice and long and roll to the pubic bone. So we often sit heavy in the tailbone and we'll get much more into this next week when we talk about the second floor and the kidneys and all that. But when we sit heavy on the tailbone, we compress the kidneys. And there's a lot of um, shortness that happens in these muscles here on the back that run along the spine. So you wanna come forward to the pubic bone so you can elongate so that when we twist, we're not twisting at kind of this crunched angle, we're twisting at a really nice long angle. So once you have rolled forward to your pubis, and you have a nice long spine, then you're gonna wrap the elbow or you can take the elbow to the outside of the knee and then take your right hand directly back behind you. So before you go anywhere, recommit to the roll of the pubic bone. Press through the right fingertips to bring the lungs forward. So really encourage the lungs forward towards your right thigh. And then look directly forward. So imagine forward is 12 o'clock. And then you're going to trace a line all the way up the uh, ceiling and then all the way around and back behind you until maybe you see to six o'clock behind you. Try and get the elbows in the same trajectory, or excuse me, the um, shoulders. So your left shoulder comes forward to 12 and your right shoulder comes back to six. And then think as if you could pivot from your right shoulder blade around to your left collarbone and then from your left collarbone back around to your right shoulder blade. See if that gives you some more space. And then have you rolled back to the tailbone? Keep it rolling forward, lifting up, coming out of the depths. And then release, come back through center, switch out to the other side. Take your right leg long, hop your left leg over. And before you go anywhere, and it can be even really useful to take your hands on your left leg and pull yourself forward so that you're sitting more on the pubic bone and out of the depths, since that's where we've been all class, in the depths, in the legs, in the first floor. Eventually, you got to come out of your basement and figure out how to go out and live life. Wrap the arm around the knee or take the elbow to the outside of the knee. Either way is fine. Take your left fingertips directly back behind you and begin to twist. Really press into your left fingertips to encourage your lungs to come forward towards your left leg. And then look forward to 12 o'clock. Track the gaze all the way up the ceiling. Make a big arch over you all the way back, directly behind you to six o'clock. And then maybe your shoulders fall in the same trajectory and you help out by moving your left shoulder blade around to your right collarbone. And then move your right collarbone around to your left shoulder blade. One more breath. And then release, come forward. Take your legs long and then roll all the way down into your spine. We're gonna do a modified bridge pose. So plant the soles of your feet down. <clears throat> and there's a couple options, a couple ways you can do this. One we'll do with a, a shoulder stretch or you're more, welcome, more than welcome if you have props to just slide the blocks underneath your sacrum. Um, anything that will get the pelvis lifted. So plant the feet firmly, lift the pelvis. 
For those of you joining me in this kind of nice, really nice shoulder stretch, you're gonna shimmy your shoulders underneath you, interlace your hands, and then you're gonna bring your butt down to sit onto your hands. So the pelvis still is lifted, but you get a little, you get a little stretch through the collarbones, through the um, whip of the shoulders. And then breathe. Let the breath be full all the way down into the pelvis. So think about breathing past the belly and into the cavern of the pelvis. And imagine that with your breath, you could make the pelvis wider, front to back, side to side. Again, the pelvis holds all of our foundational connection, like our plumbing and electric, our furnace, our heating, all of that. We want there to be space so that we can be well plugged, well connected. That we have the ability to heat ourselves up when we need, to cool ourselves down when we need. When there's a lack of energy, a lack of motivation, we heat ourselves up. When we're too fiery or too angry or too sharp with our words, then we know how to cool ourselves down. And all of this happens here in the pelvis. And then when you're ready, lift your hips up. And for a moment, release the arms, but keep the hips lifted. Press through the center of the foot. Find space up through the hips. And then like you're doing a back bend, sit the butt down, but sit the butt down first so there's space underneath the low back. When the butt touches down, toe heel your feet wide, knock your knees together. Widening the sacrum. Hand can, hands can rest somewhere on your body or not. Doesn't matter, up to you. Roll over to the right side, come all the way up and around. We'll end in a forward fold. So again, we can um, give some energy back to our kidneys. We are more than welcome to end in a Shavasana, but sometimes um, when we come back in Shavasana, we've created all this space in our bodies and then we just compress our organs all the way back down to the ground. So you might wanna wait a little bit um, after your practice if you wanna take the Shavasana, but forward fold is a really nice way to end. I'll, I'll demonstrate a couple. I'm going to do, again, without the props, just in case you don't have any. Um, Crystal will demonstrate with the props. So you can take blocks underneath your knees. You can take the blocks um, and stack them between your legs. Bring your forehead down to that. Either way. But I want you to find a good cup of the heels of the hands with your feet. So try not to cup in the middle or the toes or the inside, but cup on the outside and as far down to the heels as you can. The knees stay nice and bent here, please, so that the ribs rest on the thighs and that gives um, space for the kidneys to be well organized. And then you can drop your head down. Again, ideally, if you have props, it lands somewhere, your forehead lands somewhere on those props so your neck doesn't have to strain, but if not, no worries. Widen your knees into your armpits so that you fit yourself. The whole idea of the yoga practice is we learn to fit ourselves before we can go out into the world and fit others. It's a practice that gives us tools that helps us be well informed. Because at the end of the day, the yoga practice is not about the practice. It's actually how we go out and live life, how we cultivate, jo cultivate joy and how we can give that joy in, to others. So when we come to this final pose, it's a place where we can go inward. If you think of a hermit crab on the beach, it goes back into its shell at night to rest, to clean house. And then during the day it comes out to go out and do things, to collect food,
but it understands this need for rest, for returning home, for going inward. Come back to that weave of your imagination with the breath, moving up the backs of the legs to the tailbone. And then the exhale, finding the curvature of the spine back up to the crown. Make a commitment here to take five more breaths. If you're ready to be out of this pose and you take five faster breaths, if you want to stay in it longer, you take five slower breaths. And then whenever your time is done, whenever your five breaths have completed, then you're going to come up into your fingertips in like a halfway lift and look forward. And then keep the back bend as you come all the way up. Find a comfortable seat. Maybe you draw your legs in. Again, if you have a blanket, really great time to sit up on a blanket if you're not already there. Closing down the eyes. Finding a tall, comfortable seat. Let the breath be the thing that settles you back into the center. Finding your perineum, right sits bone, left sits bone. The great triangle that is the plug into the socket of the earth. And then from there we rise up, letting the lobes of the lungs come forward and letting the vision rise. And all of it comes from this stability of the first floor, the stamina of our legs. Hold the palms at the center of the chest. Finding one last breath together, inhale. And let it out, exhale. Whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes. Thanks guys for watching. I hope you enjoy. Next week we're going to get more into the second floor and then on um, the third week we'll get into the um, third floor. But I really want you guys to think about this week um, the way that you're moving in the first floor. If you sit really heavy in your tailbone um, when you're driving in the car, when you're sitting at the office, think about moving forward to the pubic bone. Because at the end of the day, again, yoga is not about doing yoga. It's about going out and living life well. And if our bodies are sore, if our bodies um, are not serving us, then the question becomes, how do we form our bodies better? How do we walk better? So just pay attention. Pay attention to the way specifically that you sit. And then we'll talk next week more about the second floor. And we'll see you guys soon. Thanks.